Hello, I am back with another video and today we'll be talking about Jaya Karangi, a model that was turning heads in the 80s. In the 80s, there were only blondes in the modeling world, but Jaya changed that and paved ways for Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schiffer, Linda Evangelista, and Christy Turlington. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Jaya Karangi was born on January 29, 1960 in Philadelphia, the third and youngest child of Joseph Karangi, a restaurant owner, and Kathleen Karangi, a homemaker. Jaya grew up with a family that was dysfunctional. Joseph was an alcoholic and violent. Kathleen was a miserable housewife who desperately wanted out of her marriage. Kathleen decided it was time for her to leave and abandon the family, leaving 11-year-old Jaya with her father. Jaya would later meet her mother's husband, Henry Spare. Jaya lived in dual residencies with her parents. In 1974, an incident occurred with Jaya and Henry that freaked Jaya out and a psychiatrist suggested that she need to live elsewhere. In her teenage years, she was rebellious. She had a tomboy persona and she embraced her sexuality as a lesbian. She was also obsessed with David Bowie and she was in a fan club called the Bowie Kids. She and her friends will go to gay clubs and hang out. She met her first known girlfriend and longtime friend named Sharon Beverly. At age 14, Kathleen found a letter Jaya wrote to a girl and learned about Jaya's sexuality. A family doctor suggested that Jaya needs to see a counselor. She will often party with friends and experiment with drugs such as Fincicladine. After being featured in a newspaper advertisement, she moved to New York City at age 17. While in New York, men took advantage of her, she was raped many times. She had a lot of anger from that experience and she had a hard time with men. But that didn't stop her goal to try to get signed with Wilhelmina Models. Wilhelmina was floored and signed her immediately. Her first photo shoot was with top fashion photographer Chris Von Wangenheim and Sandy Linter. During that photo shoot, she and Sandy posed nude which started a fling between Chris, Sandy and her. However, Jaya was really infatuated with Linter and pursued her, though the relationship never became stable. During the late 78, Jaya's rise to fame started to kick off and she became a model. She became a favorite model of various fashion photographers including Arthur Elbert, Richard Avedon, and Denise Peel. In 1979, she had a hookup with a photographer named Francesco Scavolo. All these male photographers loved Jaya and she was the most requested model. In the 80s, she appeared in British Vogue, Vogue Paris, American Vogue, Vogue Italia, and Cosmopolitan. She also appeared in various advertising campaigns for high-profile fashion houses including Armani, Andre Love, Christian Dior, Versace, and Yves Saint Laurent. She also appeared in Blondie's music video called Atomic. At the height of her career, she had access to clubs such as Studio 54 and Mud Club. Karangi usually used cocaine in clubs. In the 80s, she started a hookup with Mickey Rourke. In 1980, Wilhelmina died of lung cancer, which devastated her. Wilhelmina was a mentor and a mother figure to Jaya. Losing her led her to a self-destructive path, which led her to develop a codependency on drugs such as heroin. Her addiction became a problem because it affected her work. During photo shoots, she had violent temper tantrums, walked out of photo shoots to buy drugs, and fell asleep in front of the camera. Scavolo stated that during a photo shoot in the Caribbean, she had a meltdown because she couldn't find her drugs and he had to lay her down on her bed until she fell asleep. On her American Vogue cover shoot, she had track marks in the crooks of her elbows. She also had heroin abscess on her arms. During breaks, she will also be in the bathroom snorting heroin. During a Versace shoot, she told everybody that she was getting cigarettes and she never returned. Many people started to notice the track marks on her arms as well. With her addiction interfering with her work, her career tanked and soon she was out of work. The Wilhelmina modeling agency dropped her and decided to go to Ford Models. Within two weeks, they also dropped her. People started to dissociate themselves from her because they fear that her reputation would affect their work. Her friends in the industry, including Sandy Linter, refused to speak to her. Karangi underwent a 21-day detox program, but her sobriety was short-lived. She was arrested in March 1981 after she drove into a fence in a suburban neighborhood. After a chase with police, she was taken into custody where it was later determined she was under the influence of alcohol and cocaine. She went back to modeling, but nobody wanted to hire her except for Francesco Scavolo, Richard Avedon, and Albert Watson. People started to notice that she was not the model that they photographed and there was emptiness in her eyes. She had enrolled in a methadone program but couldn't commit due to her addiction. Her addiction also started to affect her career again during her final shoot in Tunisia. She was let go when she left New York and moved to Philadelphia and Atlantic City. She was broke and spent most of her earnings on drugs. At that time, she was dating a woman named Elisa Gordon. She had a three-year relationship with her, and she was the only woman that she ever loved. Their relationship was not perfect, but the love they had for each other was real. Jaya was the first woman that Elisa was curious about, and people thought that it was just a fling. 
but they developed a serious relationship and Jaya introduced heroin to her. Elisa tried to get her life together and noticed that their relationship was not going anywhere so she went to rehab. But she went right back to drugs and to Jaya. They both tried to get clean but they ended up back on drugs. Their relationship got worse when Jaya started to abuse her, steal, and cheat on her. When Jaya was diagnosed with AIDS, Elisa was the only one that put a roof over her head but Jaya repaid her by stealing almost everything out of her house, stealing her car and going back to heroin over and over again. In 1984, Jaya was admitted to an intense drug treatment program at Eagleville Hospital. There she met Rob Fay, who became one of her closest friends. After treatment, she worked various jobs including clothing store, checkout clerk, and kitchen staff at a nursing home. In 1985, she quit her job and started using drugs and engaged in sex work in Atlantic City. In 1985, she started to notice that she was not feeling well and that she might have AIDS. She took a test and found out she was HIV positive. Jaya didn't take the news lightly and had a hard time accepting it. When she was HIV positive, nobody including her mother wanted her at their homes. In the fall of 1986, she pawned everything she had and got $2,000 out of it. She checked herself into a cheap hotel and tried to overdose on heroin, but was unsuccessful. She was found on the street beaten and raped, and she was hospitalized. While in the hospital, Jaya's problem was persistent vaginal bleeding, a permanent period which left her, among other things, severely dehydrated. She was put on birth control pills to try to stop the bleeding. When that wouldn't work, a hysterectomy was considered. Her hair was falling out and she was getting weaker and weaker. Doctors had to put her on a breathing tube and she couldn't speak. Nobody was allowed to see her but Rob Fay. On her deathbed, Kathleen came to see her one last time. November 18, 1986, Jaya passed away. Jaya lived a fast life and she was only 26 years old when she died. She had it all, beauty and money, but that didn't solve her problem which was her insecurities, codependencies, and needed to be loved by her mother. She lived in an era that didn't embrace diversity. The fact that the mainstream media wanted her to be heterosexual and not a lesbian bothered her. But what hurt her the most was not being loved and not accepted by her mother because she was a lesbian. People only saw her physical beauty but not her inner beauty that was filled with light. She felt abandoned by everyone, people she thought were her friends all abandoned her at the end. No one came to her funeral but Rob Fay and Francesco Scavolo, who sent a mass card to her former peers after her death. People didn't know that she had goals after rehab she wanted to be a spokesperson for addiction. She wanted to be a better person, but life screwed her over. But she lived it, and she didn't have any regrets. Rest in peace, Jaya. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. See you soon.